I don't know what you heard about me, but a bit can't get a dollar out of me. No Cadillac, no perms, you can't see. Cause I'm a mother freaking CISSP, that's right, I passed my CISSP exam, I've been working on this for a while, if you've been watching my Twitch, my TikTok, my Discord, my Mastodon, I've been talking about this for a while and prepping for it, I studied all through DEF CON and everything, but first, before we talk about how that went, what I had to do to prepare for it, and how the actual exam went, we're gonna be talking about... Proton, the company that believes that privacy should not just be the default setting, but an inherent right to everyone. I migrated my private email server over to them a few years ago, and they've just been adding more and more tools to that suite of features. They have a great amount of tools on the free plan, but the paid for plan just gets a little bit better. They have email with aliasing that has simple login.io, so you can create a bunch of aliases and not have to give out your real email, so you can just kill that with the click of a button. The VPN's a little bit faster, and it does work with streaming services. You get more cloud storage space, and the password manager as well allows you to create email aliases as well so that if your account ever gets compromised, you don't just have to worry about creating a new password for that. You can also have a little bit of peace of mind of not having password spray attacks because every single one of your accounts can be attached to a different email alias that feeds right back to your account. And they also have a calendar and they're adding more and more features all the time. So check out Proton below in the links below. So yes, I passed the mother freaking certified information security system professional professional exam, also known as CISSP. And this is my first cert that I have ever achieved in my career. I've been in the field for a little over 10 years for IT and cybersecurity. And I also don't really have a college degree because, well, the school that I went to got shut down by the US government for defrauding them. And that's a whole other story for another day. But basically, I don't have a college degree. It's worthless, the experience that I got from there. Very expensive naps, didn't really learn anything in school. Um, all of the experience and knowledge that I've learned is either on the job or in the home labs tinkering that I have been doing for many years. And I always recommend people that if you're gonna go for certs, see if your job can sponsor you to do that, um, as was the case for me. So we managed to find some uh to start out where the journey was to prepare for this exam and everything because i've been studying for months there was a class that i found that um uh was run by the local issa chapter i think started in like march or something like that and went all the way till the end of june three hours once a week so i basically would leave work and then go straight there and then i wouldn't get back home till 10 in the evening so a lot of, you know, sacrifice and, uh, you know, commitment had to be done to prepare for this test on my part as well. Um, especially since this was my first cert. And I think those classes were extremely beneficial because the instructors were people that had taken the test before. They're working in the field in different roles, CISO, architect, you name it. And, um, gave me the insight into how to answer these questions. They didn't give you the answers per se, because the test is gonna be different for everyone that actually takes the test. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the um, actual test taking part of it, but I will tell you, I did not feel confident at all going into this test. I did not even feel confident up and uh, uh, even when they handed me the piece of paper, I still couldn't believe that I passed the test. I still can't believe that I passed the test. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, yeah, so I studied for several months. Um, at you know this class in person there's online classes things like that but i prefer to do in things in person and um we got the study guides as well um there's two study guides here the 2021 version and the 2024 version as well as the practice tests as well and um uh, they changed the test apparently I think in a little bit in early in July to add some more content and it wasn't much changed But apparently they changed the weights of the different of the eight domains that you have which I will go into in a little bit because um, basically you have to cover eight domains and for a little bit of context for the CISSP you need to cover at least three of these eight domains in your career you need to have five years of field experience to be fully in CISSP, um, four if you have a four-year degree. And those eight domains are uh, security and risk assessment, uh, risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, communication and network security, identity and access management, security assessment and testing, security operations, and software development security. 
So you had eight domains and this thick textbook basically to help you guide through it. And the classes helped us break down a lot of these things into different chunks to follow along with the book. And, um, you know, it was interesting also to talk to these professors. Well, they weren't really professors. They're instructors. Um, to get their insight on different things. Now, I did get the new one uh, because it had, you know, they had changed tests up, as I had mentioned. And the new one included things like the South African, uh, Canadian, and Chinese privacy laws, which the fact that these countries have better privacy laws than the US has, which we have basically none. There are laws that in the US that this covers, like um, Fed ramp, things like that, um, you know, uh, or regulations, all that. But that's a whole other discussion we'll open up for another time. Um, so I got this test, uh, you know, textbook over here to test, and there's little tests in here, but then there's also this book for the practice tests over here, and then I also used an app on my phone uh, from Learn Z app. I'll put links down below for everyone to get the textbooks as well as the app that I'm using, um, which this app was probably one of the most beneficial things in addition to the study guide and the classes to be able to prepare myself because... Um, I basically could gauge my readiness there and it would actually tell you how ready you are in the different domains, uh, you know, with a scoring and tell you like uh, I had attempted 2,065 questions with 1,752 correct and 313 incorrect. And you could see your history there and you could also create custom tests which was the most beneficial thing for me because you can also do the practice tests in here and a phone is more convenient for a lot of people but um i didn't have a lot of time to sit down and do the full-on practice tests um because i'm on the go things were happening in my life so the custom tests were the most beneficial because i could do anywhere from five to a hundred questions so i literally could go to the bathroom sit on the toilet and then just pump out 25 50 questions or however many i wanted um and prioritize them in the ways i wanted so i could do questions i bookmarked so if i happen to go through different questions and um you know didn't really you know uh think i was fully confident i could bookmark it to come back through it the ones i've not answered yet or if i just wanted to focus on certain areas i could just focus on the several hundred questions in each area there um and this app is free, but the paid for version is what I'm using because it gave me access to a lot of the assessment tests and more questions and everything. And it's about $17 a month, I think. It's available for Android and iOS. I think it was worth it, um, this app, just to be able to do that on the go especially while I was traveling and, you know, while I was at DEF CON, uh, I, I, you know, was literally studying the entire flight there and back while I was in the airport. And when I had free moments at DEF CON and B-Sides, I was studying um, to make sure that I was prepared for this. And I, I did not feel confident at all, you know, with this test, even to the moment that I um, got the piece of paper, I thought I had failed. So the test itself, about $750. You can buy, they usually have like a little peace of mind package, which is what I bought, which is in case that you fail, you can retake the test. You have to wait at least, I think it's two months, but uh, with the peace of mind, it was only $200 more. So about $1,000. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I was seriously thinking like, God, I'm going to have to use the voucher for, you know, retaking the test in a couple of months. But it's a nice peace of mind there uh, to if you have to run back, because otherwise then you have to shell out another seven hundred fifty dollars. Anyway, um, so I did that. I prepped for the test. I scheduled the test before I went to DEF CON. So I knew when my test date was going to be before I went to DEF CON and everything. And I'm like, I'm just going to study as much as I can. I was studying all last night and I was studying uh, the two hours I was up, uh, three hours I was up before I even went to go take the test this morning. So I was studying a lot for it, and I still didn't feel confident. So then, um, what's also interesting before we get into the actual testing center and the experience thereof, um, and the things I was told about the online testing, just to be a heads up as well, is that 
What was amazing about these practice tests and the study guide and everything was it covered topics that I've tinkered with in my home lab that I heard people on TikTok when I was making content say, oh, you're never going to need to know PGP. Oh, you're never going to need to know about all this different stuff with VPNs and, you know, Tor and, you know, symmetric versus asymmetric cryptography. And, you know, like this seems just like you're doing a fun little project. You'd be surprised how much of that was actually covered in the study guide. I mean, I literally was um, seeing parts of it talking about Tor, parts of it talking about YubiKeys, parts of it talking about TOTP authentication, password management, and, you know, all these different things that I've been tinkering with in my home lab. So it was a huge amount of vindication to know that all these years I've been tinkering with these things in my home lab, it actually was used in some way in my professional career rather than one-off things, but that a lot of people have to learn these things too. So if I can give you some advice is that take it from a person who tinkers in their home lab, all the stuff you do to tinker with your home lab can eventually be beneficial, whether it's in your work experience or you're going to get a cert out there. So with all that being said, as far as the testing experience, holy lack of confidence, Batman. It is intimidating going into these testing centers. So the first off is yes, you can take an online te uh, uh, the test online, but the issue is there. Um, you might run into the problem that some people said where um, if uh, you have dogs or stuff that make noise and you can't guarantee an absolute quiet space, like because they look around at the camera apparently and everything, and I didn't think that my workspace would be conducive to that. Um, if your dog barks, they can probably close the test out and then consider you cheating and then you have to like shell out the money for a new exam and everything. And I just was not about to do that, especially with how noisy my dog is. And you probably hear him on Twitch streams and video every now and then if it wasn't for the NVIDIA processing and things that I do. But with that being said, so I opted, of course, to go in person for the test. Now, the in-person test was made you feel kind of like you're a prisoner. So I went in, you have to bring two forms of ID and do a whole palm scan, like, you know, like they're, they're tough on like making sure. And then I couldn't even have my little kafia sudra that I usually wear around my neck. If you've watched my TikTok videos of when I was at DEF CON, you know what I'm talking about. I had the thing on my head. Sometimes I have it around my neck. Um, I don't usually wear it in the house. Um, but I am going to wear it a little bit more now that I have some new ones coming in that are going to have colors that are going to match my DEF CON shirts and such. But that that's going to be content for later. And um, I had to put uh, turn off my phones, put them in this little locker. My Apple Watch couldn't even come with me. I had to empty all of my pockets. They didn't even let me have my inhaler, my asthma inhaler in my pocket. I had to put that in the cubby. iPod, everything. Um, so did that. And then they walk you to this little computer to set you up and they offer you like noise deadening headphones. They're not even like music playing or anything. They're just literally like the same kind you would wear going to a gun range. And you're in this absolutely quiet room, um, just told to face the monitor and then you get your test. Multiple choice. I'm um, not going to go into the actual questions that I was given because um, not allowed to as part of the certification. Uh, but I will just say that um, the practice tests and the questions in the study guides alone will help prepare you for how they come out. I can say that they're multiple choice. That's about it. But everyone's going to have a random amount of questions. Um, and not a random amount of questions, but the questions are going to be randomized to you. So uh, the ones I get may be completely different than the ones you get. Because like I said, there's a couple thousand questions that I answered in the app and they're all different. So you basically do this test. You're given three hours to do the test. And I remember I, um, it was like question one. I already felt very little confidence going into this test. And you just start feeling it dwindle as it keeps going on. Cause you're not getting any feedback on this. And also, you know, the test is only moving forward. You can't go backwards. Once you've made your answer, it's like, who wants to be a millionaire? H is see your final answer locked in. You either, you know, move, win it or lose it. And then I remember I kept going to the questions. Three hours of test. I think it was around the um, hour, f hour and a half, hour 40 mark. I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And I remember I was like at a question 120 at this point. 
And I was just like, oh my God, I am not doing well. I feel so unconfident. I may as well at this point just see it through, um, keep going until they, you know, end the test. And I'm probably gonna have to come back in a couple months. And I'm thinking, God, I'm gonna have to study this area. God, I'm gonna have to study these questions. I didn't really feel confident about this question and that question. And I just was second guessing myself the whole time through. And to, to my manager's credit, he did say that that is a good attitude to have. Cause if you feel confident going to this test, you're probably gonna fail. Anyway. So I keep doing all these questions. And then finally I hit question 150, submit. It kicks me out of the test. And I'm sitting like, <sighs> probably failed. I probably failed. I, I, and I'm like thinking about when am I gonna have to take the test again, get the voucher, feeling so disappointed coming back into the house, feeling like I'm gonna go to the bar, grab a drink on the way home, all of this, and just feeling like, you know, that's gonna be a real bummer. And then, go over and they they print out the results that says you passed i was seriously in absolute shock like i passed i i passed like for several hours uh, like uh, i couldn't believe it like i was telling people like yeah i passed i couldn't believe it everyone was telling me you're gonna pass and i'm like i i didn't feel like i was gonna pass and uh, i i couldn't believe it i passed it wasn't like, oh, I'm jumping for joy. It was like, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? You know, like the whole Bohemian Rhapsody kind of going on and everything. And, you know, it's finally setting in. I passed and it's paying off. And I just want to, you know, hope that this helps that, you know, people uh, know what I did to prepare for the exam. No, you can do it yourself as someone that maybe didn't, you know, have a college degree or any certs yourself. You can do it. It's going to take a lot of work, probably. Even as someone that likes to tinker and do all this yourself, you're going to have to pull your head out of your ass to understand you can't answer it like a technician. You have to answer it like a manager, somebody who's architecting for the company with the business priorities, because what you know as a technician would be the right answer is not necessarily the right answer for this, uh, you know, exam. And you're not talking too much technically, you're talking about conceptually. But yeah, I passed my CISP exam. I can't believe it. And um, yeah. I'm still in shock. But anyway, if I can do it, you can too. I hope that this gives, you know, you the inspiration to maybe go and achieve your goals. And I love all you. Make sure to check out my Discord, my Twitch, my TikTok, my Mastodon, and all the other links below as well. And stay safe out there. Happy hacking. See you around next time.